with the basic tools such as standard electrode potential, uh, standard cell potential, and um, Nernst equation, now we can look at some practical applications. And one of them used a lot is so-called corrosion. And for corrosion, that's a so-called per-bay diagram or potential pH diagram. Potential pH diagram. It's essentially diagrams that map the conditions or regions where redox species are stable. And the regions are given in terms of potential, typically, versus SHE, or standard hydrogen electrode, and the pH, pH, which tells the acidity or basicity of the aqueous solution. These two, the potential versus SHE and pH, are typical conditions for aqueous solution. And the per bay diagram would be the diagram that gives out the condition or regions where a certain redox species is stable. This is an example of a per bay diagram. Potential, typically, in the vertical axis, pH, typically, in the horizontal axis. Okay, this is a per bay diagram for iron in aqueous solution and uh, at 1.0 millimolar. That means the iron species for such as iron 3 plus, iron 2 plus would have the concentration of 1 millimole. And the features for such per bay diagram are first areas. You would see areas or different regions. It means the region where a single species is stable. For example, you can say in this region, upper left hand corner, the iron 3 plus would be stable. What it means is the potential for the solution, if it's above this roughly 0.8 volt with a pH below around 0 this region we would have iron 3 plus to be the stable species. Below it, we have the region of iron 2 plus, which means within the boundary in this region, the iron 2 plus would be thermodynamically stable. And it specifies the pH range versus the potential range. And of course, potential is versus SHE or standard hydrogen electrode. In some other regions such as this one, we would have iron 2O3, iron oxide, and the bracket S represents solid, which means within this large area, the solid iron oxide, iron trioxide, would be thermodynamically stable or ferrous oxide. And below here, we have another region, iron, a solid, which is, means metallic iron would be stable in this broad range if the potential is negative enough. And uh, here, we also have a small region that size uh, iron 3O4 solid. Okay, so these are different areas or region where a typically a single species would be stable. And then we have these blue dashed lines, two blue dashed lines. These two dashed lines represent the two half cell reaction associated with water splitting, with water splitting. The bottom one represent from proton to hydrogen gas. The top one represents from oxygen and proton to water. We'll talk about these two so-called half-cell reactions in a moment. And the solid lines is like a boundary between different regions. These represent the conditions where two species, two species can coexist in equilibrium. For example, on this vertical line, we would have iron 3 plus and uh, uh, ferrous oxide 
coexist. In this horizontal line, we would have ion 3 plus and ion 2 plus coexist. And for this horizontal line along this line, we would have ion 2 plus and ion metal coexist. Okay, these are for solid lines. And solid lines, uh, they are have different types of solid line depending on the slope. The horizontal line, line 1 and line 2, they represent redox reactions that do not, do not involve proton or hydroxy groups. Okay, these are for horizontal lines. Redox reaction that we change in valence that we charge transfer but they do not involve proton or hydroxy groups. Well, the vertical line, like this three, number three line, it represents acid-base reaction without charge transfer. There's no redox, uh, reduction oxidation happening between iron three plus and uh, ferrous oxide or iron trioxide. The inclined line, the sloped line, the sloped line represent the general electrochemical half cell reaction quite often involving both redox and acid base reaction. Involving both redox, charge transfer, and acid base reaction. And we will talk about these in a moment. Okay, so this is our per bay diagram or potential pH diagram. We will talk about this in greater detail in later slides.